Morning everybody, welcome to the channel. It's a bit of a cold one this morning, so I put my, um, I'll call it a winter coat. We're not in winter, but it's just cold this morning. Right, you've seen the thumbnail, and a few people have asked me about this bit of kit. And um, yeah, if you've not really noticed the thumbnail, it's the Grey coat, and it's the Ultra Max. Now this is the cordless airless sprayer. This is the little bit cheaper one to the quick shot. And you know that we've got a quick shot. I'll show you that in a minute. If you want to know a little bit more about the quick shot, please have a look at the video there. I'm very impressed with that. And I thought it's only fair if we do a bit of a comparison between having one of these and having a quick shot. Now, a big shout out to the person who knows who it is, who's loaned me this. And um, thank you very much. I've got some friends in high places far from it. I've just got friends who have got one and said, Phil, if you want to try it, you can try it. So I've been loaned, once again, I've been loaned a piece of spray equipment that I've had a little bit of a play with and I thought I'd give a bit of information out to yourselves who are watching this that might be considering buying one of these. So let's start off. Let's just say which one this is. This is actually the Ultra Max. This is the Greco Ultra Max. There is an Ultra and there is also one that's a uh, cable fed, powered. The Ultra and the Ultra Max are battery, handheld battery operated, uh, using the DeWalt batteries, the same batteries that are on a quick shot. But let's just, don't wanna go about, don't wanna go on about the Ultra, I wanna talk about the Ultra Max, but I will say the difference between the two. And if there's anybody who's got the Ultra, and the Ultra Max and wants to just add any comments, please give us some feedback below. But the difference between the Ultra and the Ultra Max, the Ultra, you will notice, will have a metal guard on and metal threads for the guard, whereas the Ultra Max has plastic. And you're going to say, Phil, why is that? Why is that? Please tell us. The difference is the Ultra is geared up just to spray water-based paints. Now the Ultra Max, you can also spray solvent-based, oil-based. Now you're gonna say, well, why is the difference between the, the tips? This is a slightly different size to your standard rack tips that we've got. You know, these ones that fit virtually all of my Graco spray equipment, and they're also interchangeable on other guns. Um, if you interchange on other guns, you make sure that you use the correct tips for the guns. Don't swap and change your struggle, oh, that's by the by. Um, the plastic one is a slightly different size. It's a little bit bigger. I don't know if you can see, will it focus? It's a little bit different in size. Somebody's gonna tell me, is it seven eighteenths or six eighteenths? Doesn't matter. I'm just gonna say one's a different size to the other. The metal ones don't go on the plastic and vice versa. But we're coming back to why the plastic? Now it's all to do with the static charge buildup that you get when you're spraying um, cellulose solvent, I'll call it, let's call it solvent-based paints, oil-based paints. You can get a slight buildup of static charge when you're using those um, solvent-based paints that can, uh, let's go to the extreme, could explode on you, could catch fire. That is why when you see these kits, I'll get it out of the box. It's the bag just down here. You get one of these with it. It's the same with the um, quick shot. You get an earthing kit. And these earthing kits, please read the instructions. These earthing kits fit onto these to earth the machine to a plug socket so you don't get that static build up that you could get a bit of an explosion and catch fire. So that is why the Ultra Max has the plastic threads to help reduce that static charge buildup. That's the difference. So if you've got an Ultra, you've got metal threads and a metal guard. And if you've got the Ultra Max like this one, you have the, the plastic threads and the plastic guard, as I'm trying to screw it on. Now, let's get back to this. I've had a play with this. Quite impressed, to be honest, quite impressed. It's nice to spray with something that's just a handheld unit. And you're gonna to say to me, Phil, what's the advantage or disadvantage or why would you have this or why would you have the, the quick shot? Got the quick shot there. Let's compare, let's just give it a comparison. This is a couple of hundred quid cheaper than this. This has got, 
Correct me if I'm wrong, somebody who's watching from Greco International, I think I'm right. They've got the same style of pump. Now, these pumps only last, I'm going to say only last, for about 200 litres. Now, that 200 litres also includes um, the washing out, the flushing through of your water, as well as your paint. Both kits the same. The difference is, there's something about this with that gun there that makes this last a little bit longer because tests and what I've been told, tests have shown that these are lasting a lot longer than what these are. But that said, these are a little bit cheaper than this. So bear in mind that on your, your costings. Now, if you do need to have a new pump, you can swap the pump on these. And I think you can probably swap them on that, but I'm not talking about that. You can, you can swap them on these and a the pump's round about 150, 160 quid plus VAT. So if you say air on the side of caution, look at 200 quid to swap a pump out on this, that would get you up and running again. What you've got to bear in mind is, and what you've got to think before you buy something like this, or even this, put that down. Before you buy these units, think about what you actually want to use it for. If you just want quick touch up spray jobs, these are ideal. People who just use these for a quick touch-up spray job are having no problems with it. Thousands of these have been sold. Thousands of those have been sold that are on the floor. It's when people are using these for the wrong application, i.e. if you're going to be spraying out ceilings and walls, I'm going to say day in and day out, don't buy one of these. Don't buy one of these. Buy yourself more the entry-level airless sprayer, either a GX21, or a GXFF, which are geared up for a little bit more volume of paint, because that pot there is only holding about a litre. That said, what I've done with this has been quite quite good. It, it'll spray your door, and I'm going to spray a door for you just to show you what they're like. And, and it works. It's just a dead simple operation of using it. You put your paint in. If you don't know, I'm going to say, make sure you read instructions. But I'll just give you a quick, brief is the word synopsis. You put your paint in here. You open this air vent there. You tip the gun on an angle to let the air get to the top of that paint pot. And you squeeze, I don't know if you can hear, you squeeze the air out until paint starts coming out that little valve there. Once you've got paint coming out or water, shut that cap and clip it in place. That's now, in effect, like pressurise that pot. If you don't get the air out, you'll have problems. Once you've got the air out and you've got your paint in there, you turn it to prime. You run this for three to, well, it says in the instructions, three to 10 seconds. I find if you run them for, on prime for about 10 seconds, you will find that that starts getting the unit working. And then once you've done your 10 seconds of flushing it through the prime, you can turn the dial and it's self-explanatory, primes down and then spray is um, horizontal. You're good to go. If you need to touch, um, you need to touch up. If you need to fill up with paint, obviously make sure you turn it to prime just to reduce any pressure that might be in the system. And you can unclip, let me just get that, unclip that off the machine and ref refill your paint as you require. Um, while I've got that off, I can show you. Underneath, there is the mesh guard, which that's quite an open mesh, so it let a bit thicker paint through. I found, I do my usual, on any of the threads, I put a little bit of Vaseline. Any of the moving threads, I put a little bit of Vaseline on. Not to mix in with the paint, it's just to help these clip in place a lot easier. Let me just get that in the right position, it's there. So it clips in. The same with the threads on the guards. That's quite tight. Now, if you've got some Vaseline on it, it stops it sticking. It stops paint getting on it, which can dry and then make it a bit harder to um, remove as well. So once you've got that up and running, away you go. Um, this is very similar to a quick shot. Your spray tip size, you can go from an 08, a 0.08, so you could be using a 208, 
a 308, that sort of scale. If you want to know about spray tips, please look at there. But this will go from an 08 to a 0.16, and that would be a 16. You probably spray with a 516, a 416, and everything in between. Don't go beyond a 16 orifice size spray tip because this is not the unit for that. If you want bigger spray tip, and it's the orifice size, that's what it is. I've said about when women have babies, the smaller the hole, nothing can go through it. The bigger the hole, more paint can go through it. So that's what I'm saying is, if you've got a GX21, the maximum spray tip size is a 0.21 of a spray tip. If you've got a GX FF, even though they're the same unit, that's a 0.19 of a spray tip. And you're gonna say, Phil, if they're the same unit, those GXs, if they're the same unit, why is this spray tip different? The GX FF is a fine finish spray setup and it's got a 7.5 meter hose with a smaller diameter, which restricts paint flow. And that also means you've got a reduction on your spray tip. If you've got a GX21, that's a 15 meter hose compared to that 7.5, but it is slightly a bigger bore, which allows a bit more paint to go through, hence why you can use a, a 21 spray tip. And it's, when I say 21, it's a, a 0 0.021, um, um, well, thousandths of a, inch or whatever it is you know what i mean i'll just explain it up there but back to this what i'm going to do now i'm going to get some paint in it i've got doris the door nicely sanded down it's dusted off and cleaned i'm going to put some paint in there get it all prepared up and ready and i'm just going to show you the fan patterns that you can get now i've actually got my own spray tips i'm not going to use richard's um kit spray tip oh richard i've mentioned that i'm simon's not matt's I'm going, going to use my own. I've got a 310 and I've also got a 308. I'm going to spray with a 310. I'm going to use some paint that I've used on previous videos just as something a bit of a change. I've had it warming down underneath my feet and it's a straightforward Valspar paint, trade paint, and it is the primer undercoat and we're doing it in grey, which will be a nice contrast to the white that's been on Doris the door before. So we're going to do spraying with some primer undercoat with this and um, it just brings us up to a base for um, something in the future and i'll show you how it sprays but this will spray fine you might want to just put a little bit of water to it to make it flow a little bit better and as with all spray paint jobs it's always advisable to actually strain your paint before you actually put it into your, your pot for spraying but other than that give us a few minutes and i'll get it all set up and you can see me spraying Right, just while I'm getting the paint mixed up, a um, couple of things. I'm mixing up not a huge amount of paint, and I've got, you've probably seen them on previous videos, I've got these mixing cups that you can actually um, strain and get a certain amount of paint out, and then there's a gradient, well, a gradient, there's um, sizes on the side so you know how much water to add if you are, or water or whatever you're doing, for thinning it so it can give you a guide of 10%, 20%, 30%. So I'm using one of those. I've got my paint mixed up now there with a splash of water in it. I've only put literally a splash of water to three quarters of that pot um, of paint. And I've actually added it now to the container there. Now, because I'm gonna be spraying with a finer finished spray tip and these all take a finer finish spray tip. Always keep with the green um, Graco fine finish tips. Because I'm spraying with the fine finish tips, I'm swapping out that bigger mesh filter, you see, for the finer one. Because we, we're spraying fine, you can see that. This is, well, let's put that down. There's a big difference between those two. Oh. Hello, hello, photo. Can you remember short circuit? That had some eyes like that. Can you remember? It was short circuit, I think. Yeah. So I'm going for the finer mesh. That goes in there. And clearly, I'm just going to put a little bit of, clearly, I shouldn't say that. Just going to put a, a little bit of Vaseline just round the edges there. Only slightly just so it slides in 
and is, isn't going to stick. I've also got the Vaseline just around those uh, little, what do you call them, knuckles. What I'm going to do is just put that on there and it just locks in place. But clearly you need the pot underneath. But how it helps with having the Vaseline on the um, little knuckles there. So we're all good. We're all, we're all good. And I'm just going to get that set up and um, just prime it all up for you. I'll show you in a minute. Now I've put my 310 spray tip in and at the moment it's not on for spraying. It's on the unblocking position. If you get a blockage, you turn it round from spray. That's the spray position. Can you see that? It's like an arrow. And then if it was blocked, you'd just turn it round for unblocking. But for now, because less pressure goes through, I'll say less pressure, it's not such a finer spray that goes through there. It's a little bit safer to have it in that position when you're actually getting the spray gun ready to spray. So I've actually got the battery on, so make sure you don't accidentally press the button because there is no locking mechanism for locking the button from accidentally pressing it. But as you can see, I've opened the valve there. I'm tipping it forward. I'm squeezing, and if you can hear, yeah, you can hear the air coming out and I squeeze that all the way, all the way until the air is all out of that. And once the air's out, so I've not got much painting, so I've really got to squeeze it. I'm not saying it feels like I'm squeezing a, a silicone implant boob, but I could imagine that's what it might feel like. Right, I'm squeezing it. And once I can see a little bit of paint coming out, I don't think you can see. Can you see? No, I'm on the wrong side, sorry. Once you can see a little bit of paint coming out of there, clamp the lid down. Get that in the lock position because that is ready to go now. Now I'm actually in that position there for priming it. This is when you'll prime it for five um, from, this is when you'll prime it from three to 10 seconds. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna get a slot bucket and we're gonna do that. It's gonna be below you. While I'm talking to you, there will be no mask going on. Now, what we've not touched on is there's a dial, sorry, there's a dial on the back as your pressure. Now, with this spray tip that I've got on, you'll be looking between six and 10 spray pressure. Um, finer spray tips, you'll be a bit less than that. Now, if you read the instruction book, it will explain what sort of pressure you'll need, but adjust it. So you don't get any tails. If you've got some tails, just turn it up slightly. I'm just gonna turn it up to 10 to get the, the pressure through it. Right, we've got it primed up nicely and I've turned it to spray. I've got it on the spray position there. I've got a piece of card down here, which I'm just gonna test on it. As I said, I'm on pressure number six. That you can just see I've got. There's a little bit of tail there, so I'm just gonna to go to seven. I'll try it a bit lower down. That's not bad at all. There's a little bit of feather just on the edge. And what I'm gonna do, because I'm just gonna take the battery off, because I'm just gonna swivel. Currently, that will spray with a fan pattern vertical. I want more of a horizontal, so I've just turned it that way, because it means it'll spray horizontal, I can go up and down. Now hopefully that will be, yeah. So, because I'm gonna to talk to you, I'm not putting a mask on. I'm in the spray position. I'm on seven at the back and I'm literally gonna to go top to bottom. I'll start just above, I'll start just above the door so I'm not dumping a load of paint in one spot at the top. This is very much like any other airless sprayer. You keep about 30 centimetres, 12 inches away from the surface. That will give you a nice amount of paint on. If you're too close, you'll be putting it on and actually probably getting runs if your paint's too th thin. But also, if you're too far away, you're gonna get clouds of dust because it's gonna circulate in the air. Likewise, if you're too close, you'll get a lot of bounce back. So hopefully that is about 12 inches. So I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna start above and go down.
Now I can say a little bit of a tail on that so I'm just going to crank it up just over 7 to 8. Looks better. Don't forget this is one of my spray tips that is probably slightly worn. Now I would actually say my paint is a little bit thin there. It's gone on very very wet looking but hey ho it's going to have a nice coat for Doris the door. It's not coated up badly, it's been ever so quick, I would say there's a little bit too much paint on there with it being the 310, I'd probably be a lot better with a 308, that would restrict how much paint was going through it, um, but do you know what, I don't need any more than that, let's give a nice coat, yeah, probably have some runs on it because there's probably a little bit too much paint on it, but that has actually gone on really nice, there's a bit of power there, I could probably turn it down but we were getting the tails can you see how it sucks up all the paint into that area there once it's starting to use it all up it's just how it is but that's all good right what you want to know now is when we come to clean it when you come to clean it make sure you dump any pressure put it back into the prime position and get it priming out also I'm releasing the air in the pot because what I'm going to do now is remove the pot take all that paint out that's in there rinse it out fill it up with water do exactly the same as what I did with the um, paint squeeze the squeegee pot get the water coming out this little valve there clamp it down and then I'm going to flush it through with the water there but when you flush it through turn it upside down because this machine can go any way you want turn it upside down and flush your water through because the 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 inverted because with it being inverted like that the gravity will help you clean it all out so that's what I'm going to do and I'll catch you in a, a few shakes of a gnat's tail what I want to mention is if you were spraying solvent based paints have a metal pail metal bucket and when you actually clean your unit out make sure it's still grounded but also make sure that the actual gun is touching the side of the metal pail because that, that will help earth as well when you're actually dumping out all the um, excess paint that you're not needing so all good there and yeah we'll catch you in a bit just out of interest I've swapped over to the um, 308 spray tip and I'm going to spray Dave the door 310 with that consistency of paint was a little bit too thin um, so what I've done I've gone with neat paint now and just out of interest to see what it's like with a 308 um, I've primed it up it sprays all right so I'm just going to get spraying Do you know what? That was a lot better. So 308s for the win. Thicker paint for the win. And we dialed that down to just over 5. There might have been a bit of a tail there that you saw, but we could just lose that by just turning a little pressure. So, um, yeah, that's good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to get cleaned out now, and I'll um, give you a bit of a sum up at the very end. So there we have it. Clean that out. And I'll 
people say about cleaning out spray equipment, I probably, well, you know what I'm like, I like to clean out my spray equipment nicely and properly. I've probably been about 15 minutes doing that. All it is is a case of just stripping down the tip guard, take that off, get that rinsed. Um, what I do is I remove that pot, take all the paint out, wash that pot out first. Also take the guard off. You'll notice that I've swapped back to the um, original black guard and not the blue guard now, because I'm putting it away. But flush all your paint out that, make sure it's clean. Fill it up with warm water. Don't do it hot, just warm, lukewarm. Put that on and then flush all that paint that's in the actual pump and the mechanism through the end. Now, a bit of a, t people might worry, you know when you're priming, don't expect to see paint coming out the end because it primes back into the actual pot to keep it pressurized. Whereas if you're used to, um, a con well, I'll say a conventional uh, airless sprayer, you have a priming pipe that you actually put into a, a separate pot or something like that. It, it primes it back into whatever you put it into. This is doing exactly the same, but it primes it into there. So don't worry if you switch to prime and try and spray and nothing comes out, that's how it should be because there's actually a hole there that's the primer that primes into that pot. So that's just a bit of a tip. Um, again, once I've got warm water going through there, you'll notice that it primes any paint that's still in the actual mechanism into there. So you'll start getting dirty water coming through, but flush it through your spray tips. Just get that, get your spray tips cleaned with that warm water coming through. And I use a, a tip saver for this tip. So once you've got a bit of water going through and you've rotated it back both ways, you know that they're not blocked. I take those out and they go into a tip saver for the next time. That's a fluid in a pot that keeps them, let's keep them, keeps them moist. Keeps them moist. That's something I imagine Fox is saying, keeps it moist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know who I'm talking to, Chris. Um, love you, <laughs> love your YouTube shorts and your reels. Um, digressing again. So flush it through. Once you're happy with that um, dirtier water going through, tip that out and get some more water back in it. And don't forget, even though you're actually flushing water through it, do exactly the same. You tip it on the angle, you expel any air out, and you know you've got the air coming out when that just oozes a little bit of paint, oozes paint. Once you've got the oozing paint through there, just quickly whip that across and then you're good to go. And as I said, flush it out upside down so the gravity helps go through the actual mechanism. Because the mechanism is, well, the mechanism, the holes are there. So it's as simple as that. Now, I'm gonna, my honest opinion, because this is what you're here for, would I choose this over that. No, I wouldn't. You're going to say why. The versatility of this being a handheld gun with the actual pump being on your hip or holding it is a lot easier to maneuver that around than that. I mean, look at that. That's quite heavy when it's got nearly a litre worth of paint in it. And you could see, I tried it holding it but you actually, it's a two-handed job. It's, you need not two people, you need just two hands to keep it oh, guided. I'll say guided. Because you know when you're spraying, keep parallel with the surface. Keep parallel with the surface. You're not seeing it because I keep it parallel with the surface. Don't be arcing it because as you arc, the middle part will be dumping the most paint. And as you come on the sweep of the arc, that puts less paint on. So that's why you need to hold it parallel to the surface, whether it's up or down, left or right, keep it at that same distance all the way through because that arcing is going to give you a feathered edge with a heavy amount of paint going in the middle. It's not going to be even. But going back to it, I prefer this. Won't be too keen on having one of these. I'm glad I've tried it because it was interesting to see what it's like. And also practice. I mean, I don't like using every day as a school day because I always say every day is a school day if you never went in the first place. Clearly, you know, I went to school, painting school. But technology and stuff moves on and you've got to keep with the times and you try things out. Now, I thinned that paint slightly because it was quite thick. Even though I'd got it warmed, I sprayed there with the wrong spray tip. That was a 310. It put too much paint on and I'm going to say it's starting to run like the Barbadian cricket team. 
yeah, the getting runs on it. And if you want to know about me and Barbados, there'll be a video there. Barbados is lovely. Went on to a smaller spray tip there, the 08, a lot better. I, I went with thicker paint and it's actually sprayed really nice. And because we've got a less amount of paint gone onto that surface, it's actually drying off quicker as well. So bear that in mind. Just think of what spray tip you're using. Think of the orifice size and think of the actual, the viscosity, the thickness of the paint and how it is. If in doubt, just have a look in the instruction book because it does give you a guide scale of what spray tip for what sort of product you're using. And also it gives you a guide on what your spray settings will be. Now, normally if you're spraying like what I've been doing, you will be between six and 10. A little bit less if you've got a smaller spray tip with thinner paints like um, your lacquers and your varnishes. But for what probably we're doing as a decorator into spraying, and don't get me wrong, this will suit some people. It's it's worth knowing what spray tip you need for what setting and what your viscosity of your paint is. And if you've got a viscosity cup, if you don't know what a viscosity cup is, it measures how quick the paint goes through the little pot and you time it. That's something else you learn at college. But I got it wrong there because I was just trying it out. I've got it right there and that's actually coming out quite nicely. But I would still go with the quick shot and spend that extra money because of the versatility of how manoeuvrable that is compared to this. But as I said at the beginning, please bear in mind the sorts of jobs you're doing. If you're only doing touch-ups and you want something quick and easy to set up and clean out, both of these are gonna tick the box and hit the spot because they clean out ever so quickly, easily. 10 minutes, dead, no problem, no mess. But if you are doing bigger jobs, start looking at the, particularly I've got a GX FF. You could be looking at a GX 21, which is that little bit um, longer hose and you can go bigger, I spoke about that. You can get a GX 21 with a hopper kit, but I've also got the 495 ST Max 2, bigger sprayer. If you're spraying day in, day out, and you need something that's gonna chug along nicely, go for a bigger kit, but you're doubling your prices. You're going from thousand pound thousand pound will probably get you a GXFF. If you go into uh, a, a 390, um, ooh, what are they about? 13, 1400 pounds. If you're going up to the 495s, you're looking at nearer 2000 pounds for stuff. So bearing in mind, this isn't a cheap sport. This isn't a cheap sport. It's like photography. The lenses are expensive, the cameras are expensive, and you've got to know what you're doing with it because it's all down. Like good comedy, it's all down to timing. And on that note, I'm gonna say, please watch the videos at the end. Thank you very much to the people that recently have been buying me a coffee. It's much appreciated. And also the people that are, well, giving me super thanks because that also helps towards me paying that uh, monthly subscription that I've got with Adobe for editing software. So thank you very much. Thanks for listening. I know this has been about a 20 odd minute video, but we needed to touch on this and we needed to say, Phil, what would you go for if you got the two? I'd go for this, but, this is also in addition to other spray equipment that you'll have, and that's what you've got to think of. But any questions, please just give us a, um, a comment below, and I love you all.